When training a machine learning model, lower error is not necessarily better. Let's look at this through a regression problem on a dataset for California. Each of the rows in this dataset has a total bedrooms value and a total rooms value. So each row is an area in California and we can count the number of total bedrooms they have and the total number of rooms they have. If we were to plot this on a scatter plot, we would see this result with total bedrooms on the x-axis and total rooms on the y-axis. To model the trend in this data, we could draw a line through it. That's called a linear regression. And if we were to do that, well, we'd have this line here. And what's useful about this line is that for any total bedrooms value, say 3000, we could look up the associated prediction corresponding to that value. So with total bedrooms equal to 3000, the linear regression model would predict roughly 15,000 total rooms would be in that California area. Our model has error. And so everywhere the line does not pass through one of the points, we have an error between that point and the model. That's the error or distance between the predicted value and the actual value. For each of those distances that we have, if we're to sum those distances between every point and the line, and we forget about the fact that some points are above the line and that some points are below the line, then we would get some big value of error. That's one total big error metric that represents how comparatively bad our model is. And for this one, well, our model has an error of 8,500,000 roughly. A linear regression is not the only model that we could make. Here is a nonlinear model, and you can see it passes through the data points much more often. In fact, any of these ones that are well spread apart here, the model was able to go through each of those. And so this is going to really reduce the total amount of error because there's zero error every time the model passes through the point. And so it's unsurprising that this model has a significantly lower error at roughly 7 million. So the nonlinear model has a lower error on what we call the training set. This data set in blue, it is what we trained the model on. So we call that the training set. The nonlinear model did better on the training set than the linear model did. It was significantly better. But what we'll see is that the linear model is actually still going to be a better model. Hence, at the beginning, lower error does not mean better necessarily. Let's take a look at that. So if we were to grab a new data set, and we'll call it test, because this is what's going to test the model. It has the same columns. We still have total bedrooms and total rooms, and each row is one area in California. Well, we're going to plot those on a scatter plot again, and we will have a different data set. So see, it looks slightly different, but in general, it still follows the same trend. It seems to go up in a line just like this. So if we were to draw a line through this data, well, we'd end up with this line here. Now, what's very important to understand is that this line is the exact same line that was drawn for the training set of information. So whatever that line was, that is the exact same line here. We did not draw a line specifically through this data. We took new data and then we overlaid our line. And this must be the same line because we trained one model. This is our model. We trained the line. We fit that line to that data. And now we're going to see how well it fits this new set of data without actually explicitly training on this data. As you can see, the model actually fits this data very well still. And therefore, we see an error. Well, we're going to see a significantly lower error. Now, right now, I want you to not care about this value comparing that to the training set. We will look at the differences between train and test later. This is the test data set. The other was the train. Later, we will look at the difference between the train and the test. But for right now, look at this error. And we're going to compare it with only the nonlinear model we're going to create on this new data set. So this is the same nonlinear model, except it's on this new data set. Again, we did not train this nonlinear model to fit this new data set. We trained this nonlinear model on the previous or training data set, and we overlaid this function here, which is what we're going to use to predict this test data. So if we were to check the error of this model on this new set of data, 
Well, the error is 1.6 million approximately, and that is a bigger error than the linear model on this new data. So it flipped. Before, on the training set, the nonlinear model was much better than the linear model. But now on this new data set, the test data set, what we're using to evaluate the performance of our models, well, now it actually means that this linear model is better than the nonlinear model. Hence, lower error does not mean better necessarily. When creating machine learning models, we care most about their ability to generalize to new data sets. And so we hope they learn from one data set, they learn from a training set, and given that same model, we hope that it does well in the future. And so we use a test data set like this in green to evaluate the performance of those models that were trained. And therefore we see that the linear model actually captured the trend much better than the nonlinear model. Although the nonlinear model is very jerky and it's allowed to go up and down a lot, the true trend of this was actually linear. And so when we got a new data set, the nonlinear model was unable to follow this new data because it was stuck doing what it was learned on the training set. It actually was wrong in many, many places here, much more than just the linear model would be by going straight through the original data set. Let's now look at this through a classification lens. And again, we'll look at the mood of some teenagers. I have plotted on the x-axis the size of lunch in calories and on the y-axis the size of breakfast in calories for a hundred people and if they are in green that means they are happy and if they are red that means they are angry. We wish to make a machine learning model that can accurately separate who is going to be happy and who is going to be angry based off of the size of lunch and the size of breakfast. As we can see, it's roughly true that if we were to draw a linear decision boundary here and say everyone over here would be predicted angry and everyone over here would be predicted happy, that model would be pretty decent. And so if we do that, we make a linear model, it draws a line and does just that. Anything colored in red here in this red region, the model will predict as being angry and anything over here in this blue region the model will predict as being happy. The error of this model is best calculated by how many times it got it wrong. And so this model got this point wrong, and this point, and this point, as well as this point, this point, and this point, and any points where the color does not match the prediction. So these people were happy, but they were actually predicted as angry, and these people in red and the blue here, they were actually angry, but they were incorrectly classified as being happy. In total, if we sum up the errors, the model got 18 things wrong. Now, if we were to draw a nonlinear decision boundary, learn a nonlinear model, well, it's going to make something much crazier than just a linear decision boundary. But still, anything in red will be predicted as angry, and anything in the blue region will be predicted as happy. What we'll see again is since this is the training set of data, the nonlinear model is going to have a lower error. It can fit all of these tiny little points here and it gets a total error of zero. Now I know the picture might not show that it's zero, but the picture is slightly wrong because this is hard to show. This model was able to get a zero error. Again, we wish to make a model that can generalize to new data. So if we get new data, where we get, say, these new happy people and these new angry people with the size of lunch and calories and the size of breakfast and calories on the x and y axis, well, we have a full new data set, which we'll call the test data set. And we use that to evaluate the performance of our linear and nonlinear models. If we are to make a nonlinear model, well, that would draw a linear decision boundary. And again, everything that is colored wrong is incorrectly classified. These green points in the red are classified incorrectly. The model got those wrong. And anything here where the red is in the blue here, they are incorrectly classified as well. But you can see here, it did a pretty good job on this new data set. And note that this new line, this was not trained on this new data set. This is the exact same line or decision boundary that was formed from the training set. This model on the new data set got only 19 wrong. That's only one more wrong that it got on the test set than it got on the training set. That's really good. And so in total, 
That model got an accuracy of 81% on the test data. But if we were to draw over that same nonlinear decision boundary, note that this did not train on the new data. This is the exact same regions that is built from the training set. Well, this model does significantly worse. It gets 23 errors. On the training set, the nonlinear model got zero wrong, but on the test set, it got 23, and the linear model got 18 wrong at first, but now on the test set, it got 19. So the linear model stayed consistent at pretty good, and the nonlinear model went from really good to, you know, the worst we've seen so far. So again, the same thing happened. The nonlinear model fit the data too hard, and so it was unable to capture the overall trend, which is about there's a line in the middle here somewhere. The linear model, you know, did worse at first, but it generalized better to the new data. Thank you for watching. I hope that helped and have a great day.